It was a peaceful morning after Christmas in 2004. Life in Pillai Chavadi was reluctantly getting back to the grind after all the fanfare and celebrations. While far away, deep under the Indian Ocean, something terrible happened. The ocean bed ripped open. An earthquake measuring 9.2 shook the earth off its very axis, releasing energy equivalent to 23,000 Hiroshima-type atomic bombs. The trembling stopped, but the actual disaster had only just begun. It crept in quietly from the middle of the ocean. But as it neared the shore, the force began to build into a giant wall of water that crashed over the coast, hitting everything with tons of crushing water. The most destructive tsunami in recorded history hit the Indian coastline after it had already caused havoc across 13 other countries bordering the Indian Ocean. 26th December 2004 was a Sunday. We were summoned to the office and then we were informed that sea has come into the land. There is a large, large devastation in most of the fishermen hamlets. And that day we have never heard about the word tsunami at all. Tsunami, a Japanese term meaning harbour wave, is a series of huge water waves caused by the displacement of large volume of water, typically in an ocean, sea or a large lake. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, landslides, glacier carvings, meteorite impacts and other disturbances above or below water all have the potential to generate a tsunami. Setting up of the ITEWC soon after the 2004 tsunami. As a direct result of the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004, a reappraisal of the tsunami threat for all coastal areas was undertaken by the United Nations and various national governments. The government of India immediately initiated the setting up of an advanced tsunami warning center at Inkois, the Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services, Hyderabad. An autonomous body under the ESO, Earth System Sciences Organization, Ministry of Earth Sciences, Government of India, INCOIS, through sustained ocean observations and focused research, serves to provide oceanic information and advisory services to the society, government and scientific community as a whole with a wide spectrum of ocean observation systems. The moment the earthquake occurs anywhere in the Indian Ocean, or for that matter anywhere in the world, uh, we can detect that earthquake within the shortest possible time within a few minutes and also we can assess the impact of that earthquake whether it can generate a tsunami and issue the warnings. Forewarned is forearmed. With this belief, INCOIS making use of cutting edge technology and scientific research instrumentation set up ITEWC or the Indian Tsunami Early Warning Center. The Indian Tsunami Warning Center continuously monitors the seismic activity in the two tsunamigenic source regions of the Indian Ocean through a network of national and international seismic stations. This network enables the detection of any tsunamigenic earthquakes within a time period of six minutes of occurrence. Water level data is also monitored continuously from a network of national and international tide gauges and bottom pressure recorders. This network enables confirmation or cancellation of a tsunami warning. All the data sets are continuously monitored in the early warning center using a custom built software application that generates alarms or alerts in the warning center whenever a preset threshold is crossed. Tsunami bulletins are then generated based on preset decision support rules and disseminated to the concerned authorities for action following the SOP. Importance of a complete disaster management system. With all the latest and advanced ocean monitoring equipment, 
seismic information network, computer modeling algorithms and other tracking systems in place, we are now adequately equipped to predict the event of a tsunami and its impact. But all these technological advancements may not necessarily translate into the actual safety of innocent lives until timely information reaches the most vulnerable, the people staying along the coast. Last mile connectivity can pose challenges in ensuring proper access to relief measures. One of the biggest problems with regard to responding to a tsunami event is that it gives very little warning time before it hits the coasts. There are hardly any symptoms while the losses it can cause are huge. Loss of lives, damage to assets, property and infrastructure, as well as disruption of livelihoods of coastal communities. An effective disaster management agency integrates a good plan comprising of preparedness, mitigation, response, recovery and rehabilitation, besides educating and spreading awareness that will ultimately help in reducing losses. As mandated by the Disaster Management Act 2005, the Government of India created a multi-tiered institutional system. The Ministry of Home Affairs is the nodal agency at the national level for coordination of response and relief in the wake of natural disasters. The National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, as the apex body chaired by the Prime Minister of India, the State Disaster Management Authorities SDMAs, chaired by the respective Chief Ministers and the District Disaster Management Authorities DDMAs, chaired by the District Collectors and co-chaired by Chairpersons of the Zilla Parishads. Disaster response is a multi-agency function. While one lead or primary agency is responsible for managing and coordinating the response, a host of other agencies will support and provide assistance in managing the incident. These are called ESFs or Emergency Support Functions. Each ESF is headed by a lead ministry or organization responsible for coordinating the delivery of goods and services to the disaster area and is supported by numerous other organizations. There are 12 major ESFs, each with a specific mandate that is carried out by their Quick Response Teams or QRTs that are mobilized within minutes of their being intimated of a situation. Preliminary paper tests and communication tests have already been done at various levels on more than one occasion. And with each such test, the system was analyzed and better. To validate the preparedness, the efficiency and effectiveness of the entire mechanism in the event of an actual situation, UNESCO, along with the governments of 23 Indian Ocean Rim countries, decided to conduct a mock drill on 12 October 2011, mimicking the tsunami events of December 26, 2004. The drill was codenamed Exercise IO Wave 11. INCOIS, in close coordination with all the government agencies, successfully conducted Exercise IO Wave 11. At the ITEWC, the decision support system and standard operating procedure was tested out to perfection, with warnings being generated and disseminated to all the required agencies precisely and on time. In all, 15 bulletins were sent from the ITEWC to all agencies during the span of the exercise. Based on the simulation of the hypothetical tsunami, specific bulletins were sent to agencies as per the geographical location of the areas to be affected under their jurisdiction with warning levels, details regarding inundation, wave height and time of arrival. Depending on the type of message received, each agency is learned to have taken the drill down to different levels. Places like Pondicherry, a few districts in Maharashtra, they have actually planned to take this drill down to the community level. That means the disaster management divisions of these states, they receive the bulletins from us, they actually exercise their SOPs and pass on the information using their last mile communication systems through their line departments and reach the communities in some villages. And villagers also will evacuate. So basically this is an end-to-end -end test to the Indian Tsunami Warning System as well as to the entire Indian Ocean Tsunami Warning and Mitigation System. The disaster management authorities in Puducherry took the drill down to the grass root level in the small fishing hamlet located on the eastern coast of India, Pillai Chavadi. 
the ITEWC sent the first bulletin, which was an earthquake information bulletin at 6.35 a.m. IST. The State Emergency Operations Center at Puducherry received this bulletin with the details regarding the earthquake that struck off the coast of Sumatra, Indonesia. The second bulletin was sent at 6.45 a.m. IST stating that there is a potential tsunami threat for Indian coast as a result of the earthquake. At 7.10 a.m. IST, the third bulletin was issued by the ITEWC confirming that there was a tsunami threat in the Indian coast and was expected to hit the coast of Puducherry at 8.28 a.m. IST. The district collector was briefed immediately about the potential threat and the warning issued by INCOIS. Orders were given to activate all ESFs concerned. All the team leaders, quick response team members and other stakeholders were intimated immediately through SMS by the Disaster Response Call Center. Evacuation orders were given through VHF sets installed at the coastal fishing hamlets as well. A host of last mile communication systems such as SMS based alerts and megaphones were also successfully used by the local authorities to alert the coastal population. By 7.30 a.m. IST, the QRT for evacuation had reached Pillai Chavadi village along with other QRTs. A relief centre was set up at the government middle school Pillai Chavadi with people from low-lying areas being evacuated and taken there. The police had deployed a special team to ensure law and order at the disaster site for smooth and orderly evacuation. Once evacuation was started, suitable vehicles were made available for the transportation of the evacuees from the disaster site to the relief centre. By the time the hypothetical tsunami wave hit the coast of Pillai Chavari, most people had already evacuated the beaches, the entire relief, rescue and medical machineries were in place and fully functional. Search and rescue teams from the fire department were sent out to save those who were trapped or injured. They worked in close association with the medical team. As soon as those people were rescued from their positions, they were placed on stretchers and then, through the ambulances, were taken to the medical camp in the relief center for medical attention. Aerial surveys were in place to give first-hand information regarding inundation of water, casualties or civilians stuck off the coast, etc. Electricity that was disrupted due to the tsunami devastation was restored on a temporary basis by the civic authorities. Even the speed and efficiency of the debris clearance team was tested as a part of this drill. The relief centre had all facilities like drinking water, proper rooms for receiving the evacuees, accommodation for the medical team to provide medical attention to the people who might have got injured. A fully equipped media centre was also set up to ensure immediate and accurate communication between the relief centre and the outside world. A help desk was also set up for information regarding those affected. The victims could also communicate with their family and friends and inform them about their safety through the telephone lines that were set up at the relief centre. Proper nourishing food was provided timely to all those at the relief centre as well. Multi-pronged ESFs and ITEWC were totally in charge of the situation in the Union territory of Puducherry, Pillai Chavadi village. The exercise which we did uh, for uh, tsunami drill is essentially to find out the, the how the entire system works. That means right from the assessment of the earthquake and whether it will generate tsunami or not 
then the how our communication systems are working between the center and the disaster uh, emergency units in states and the central government and then ultimately how this information gets converted up to the grassroots level what actions are taken and how much time it took whether it was done everything worked or not whether all equipment worked like your email or a uh, your fax machines or a websites or any any communication devices the major aim of the tsunami mock drill was to make people realize that the government was by their side and always ready to swing into action when a disaster struck the other important aim was to enable people to learn about protecting themselves during the event of a disaster this was taught to them through the enactment of street plays and personal interactions not least of all the department was able to assess the level of preparedness they were in and their technical as well as general competence in the face of a disaster by the way they have put up the uh, mock drill it is very well evident that the departments are very well prepared to face such a disaster because within such a half an hour time they could uh, reach the site they could reach the people they could evacuate the people and put them into a proper relief camp and as well as providing all the facilities in the relief camp which shows that uh, the departments are in full shape they are full in, in full preparedness to face any sort of disaster the mock drill was executed with such precision and accuracy that unesco had handed over the responsibility for the entire Indian Ocean Tsunami Advisories to the Regional Tsunami Advisory Service Providers RTSPs of the region India, Australia and Indonesia. UNESCO Director General Irina Bokova and Executive Secretary of Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission congratulated the representatives of the three RTSPs through a video conference. Permanent representative of India to UNESCO Sri Vinay Shil Oberoi also joined the video conference from Paris and conveyed his congratulatory message. For Incois and its parent enterprise, the ESO, seamlessly synergizing with other government bodies to demonstrate a successful mock drill, was a show of promise that in spite of there being no dedicated machinery or human resources for tsunami management in place, an attitude of alertness and cooperation between diverse government agencies can deliver such stunning results. As one more tsunami threatens to strike, the coasts of the Indian Ocean have a friend by their side, monitoring the oceans round the clock, ready to sound the alarm prepared to alert the populace and set into motion a chain of evacuation activities so that life itself can be suitably protected. The fishermen of Pillai Chavadi village and hundreds of other communities dotting our coasts can now do away with their fears. For the Indian Tsunami Warning Center and Inkois know and understand only too well how important it is to be fully prepared and more importantly just how precious human life can be. The Indian Tsunami Early Warning Center ITEWC of the Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services INCOIS, India's reliable observer of the Indian Ocean.